Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2021. Having a lot of fun with this app, exploring it as an alternative to Lightroom, which I've talked about in previous videos. I'm going to be leaving Lightroom looking for a, a good alternative. On One is, is clearly very capable. As I said, I'm having a lot of fun exploring the app and everything you can do. And what I'm doing today, I just wanted to do something kind of different and creative simply because I think different and creative is both fun and frankly a good exercise, both in terms of kind of building that creative muscle, but also in terms of just experimenting with the software and learning what you can do. And that's what I'm doing today. So in this photo, I usually start in tone and color here on the develop tab, but I'm not. I'm gonna start in the effects tab and I'm gonna go ahead and get HDR look. And what I wanna do is mask this in to the flower itself. So I'm gonna click on the masking window. I'm gonna click on invert. And then I wanna click on paint in, if I could highlight that properly. And so what I wanna do is paint this in, but I don't wanna use any of those brushes. I want to use the perfect brush over here, which frankly is amazing, and I did a video about over there. So uh, if you wanna check that out, you're welcome to. I'm gonna go ahead and paint this in using the perfect brush and just kinda of run all around here and kinda of see what I can get uh, taken care of. So there you go, there's a quick and dirty job. And as you can see, I didn't quite get it all, so I'm gonna come over here and clean that up a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. Now I've got a couple of spots where I need to paint out. Shrink my mouse a little bit, come along these edges and paint out where it kind of spilled over. And it does a great job, I think, of getting those edges. And there you go, there's my mask. I think that looks fantastic. I'm gonna click on view to hide that. And if I turn this off, you can see there it is before and there it is with the mask applied just to the flower. Now I'm gonna copy that mask because I'm gonna use it again. And this is where I'm gonna go do some of my fun creative stuff, starting with the textures filter. And it defaults to that, but I'm gonna click on this bokeh. Uh, and I know I say that wrong. I talked about that in a previous video. I think it's bokeh. Um, I just grew up saying bokeh. So my apologies to those that know how to pronounce it properly. Um, but I just clicked on this one and it defaults to this photographic bokeh 12, and I kind of like that, so I'm gonna leave it there. It also defaulted to a blend mode of subtle and the opacity of 80, and you know what? I like that. I just think that looks just right like that. So there it is before, and there it is after. Basically, uh, it's got that kind of bokeh light leak added to the photo. I like it, it's fun. It's right up the uh, alley that I wanna go down. Uh, it's right in the right creative direction, whatever it is, you know what I'm trying to say, but I'm not finished, I got a lot more to do. I'm gonna add filter again, I'm gonna get another texture filter. And that's one of the things I'm really enjoying about using On One is that there are so many textures built in. And in fact, let me just go show you, these are all the different kind of textures that are built in. So this is not a deep dive on this uh, tool or filter in any sort of way, but as I, hover over these, you can see all the different things that are built in, and I think that's really cool. There's light leaks, there's all kinds of backgrounds. The one I'm gonna use is this Light Leak 5, and if I turn this off, there's the before and the after, kind of warmed it up a little bit, and a little bit more light. Uh, it's actually a light leak, whereas the other one is kind of a bokeh uh, kind of approach, uh, dropping those little, uh, I don't know, specular highlights, I'm not sure what they call it. I call them bokeh balls, but you know what I'm saying. So I basically used two different kind of light textures on this photo so far to get where I am. And once again, this one defaults to a blend mode of lighter and an opacity of 50. I could bring that up if I wanted to, to create a little bit more light in there. And in fact, I think I'm gonna do that, put that at about 65. Just having fun experimenting. There are no rules. Everything is just fun. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna go get texture filter again because you can just keep stacking these filters if you want to, and, and I do want to, so I'm gonna click on more, and this time I'm gonna get their ornamental paper, which by the way, you can just click on these to get into the categories, that's paper, and I'm gonna get this ornamental paper one. Now, it's showing up like that, but I'm gonna go to this darker, and look what that does. That blend mode makes a huge difference. So let me show you that one more time. If I have the normal blend mode, I don't like that at all. Blown out, way too white, but I kinda like that paisley sort of pattern. It kinda goes with a flower a little bit. And as you hover over these blend modes, you get the preview of what they look like. And I really like the darker. I just think that helps make the photo. And it kinda pulls some of those colors together as well. Now here's the thing, I don't want that texture to be on the flower itself. I didn't mind on the other two because the light leaks and the kind of bokeh balls were kind of in other areas, but I don't want it here. So I am gonna paste the mask and now I'm gonna invert. And there we go. So basically I've just taken the mask that I built down here on HDR look and I copied it and then I pasted it here and inverted it. So now remember white reveals, black conceals. So the mask is being concealed in the majority of the flower and yet being revealed in the background. So it's a great 
and super fast and super easy way, let me hide that again, um, to apply a texture to a background and isolate your subject. So I'm liking how this looks. I'm gonna do some more stuff. I'm not done having fun. I'm gonna use the replace color filter and that's kind of what I'm doing in this video is exploring some of the fun, different creative things you can do here. But it basically allows you to pick a color, a target color with this eyedropper, which I'm gonna go pick this kind of red, something like that. And I'm gonna highlight that color and then you can come over here to color change. Now you can roll the hue if you want to, uh, and in fact, that's actually what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go with this kind of bluish purple, but I could also just click the sort of color wheel thing here and drag this around and do kind of anything I wanted to do. So something like that. You can see you got lots of different creative options here. I'm gonna go with roughly where that was, and that's fun. I mean, I just basically took the color from red to kind of bluish purple. So let me show you the before, there it is, and the after, I kind of like how that stands out. And notice it's also picking up a little bit of the color in the background and helping to change that a little bit. I kind of like that. I think I'm gonna bring the saturation down just a little bit so it's not too over the top, but I really like where I am, but still more to do. So now that I've done all that, my normal stop as I said at the beginning of the video would be to start and develop and then go to effects. I've done all these effects, so now I'm gonna go to develop and play a little bit here. I'm gonna give contrast uh, about a 20. I'm gonna pull the highlights down about like a negative 50. I'm kind of darkening this image a little bit, giving it a little bit more pop. And if you remember the first, uh, the starting image was fairly bright, so I'm trying to overcome a bit of that. I'm actually gonna pull the shadows down a little bit as well. And the haze tool is great. As you hover over that, you can see it says reduces or enhances haze and fog. And looking at my notes here, I'm pulling that down to about a negative 30. So again, that's creating a crisper, kind of more bold look in the photo, which I kind of like. Now the temperature is gonna come down, something about like that, and the tint is actually gonna come down as well quite a bit. And the tint is gonna be uh, not that much, maybe something about like that. And I'm just taking some of that green out of there. Let me pull this blue. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna pull that. I'm gonna do it something about like that. And then here I'm gonna pull saturation and vibrance down. They're a little too intense, too much blue. So I'm gonna do something about like that which I think looks pretty cool. So I've done that. Now I'm gonna actually go back over here and get another filter. And this time I'm gonna get dynamic contrast. And here I'm gonna bring this small up to about like a 30, 35, something about like that. Let me show you the before with that tool. There it is before and after. It really gives a nice pop in those details and the appearance of kind of crispiness in the photo. It's also, of course, applying across the entire image. I haven't masked it in and I don't intend to because I like how it gives a little bit more pop to the background. And if you see that before, and the after, the texture in that paper texture file is coming through and it looks a little bit more real, more like real paper to me. So I kind of like how that impacts that part of the photo as well as the flower itself. And the last thing I'm gonna do is go get a border. And borders, uh, again, it's just like in the textures, you can get in here and if I click on more, you can see there are so many different borders. And as I hover over them, you get all these options that show up. There's just a ton and this is not a detailed video about it. I'm gonna use this emulsion transfer number two. And the only thing I'm gonna do is come down here to scale and this will actually increase or decrease the size of it. I'm actually gonna decrease it to like a negative six, something about like that, kind of create that kind of look to the border. And let me show you the before and after. There's the before and the after. You can see it kind of shrinks the photo a little bit. So I'm getting the border there on the outside one more time, before and after. And that's my entire photo. So let me show you what we started with because it's, it's a very different looking photo. There it is. I mean, it's a beautiful photo, just to be clear. I didn't have anything against this photo to start with. I think it's lovely. I love the light, the color. It's just beautiful and natural looking. I just wanted to do something a little different, a little, I don't know, creative, a little maybe odd. I don't know. And I've created this kind of crunchy, texture, just very different kind of look. Now, all of this is customizable, of course, and one of the great things is, that, like uh, with replace color, if you wanted to, for example, adjust how that color looks, you could come in here with this opacity and take that down a little bit, so that, you know, obviously at zero in pass opacity, you're gonna have that original red color, which actually looks pretty good. But I was at 100, which made it quite a bit more blue, but you could come in here and adjust opacity of these various tools. So if something was a little too much, you could come in and adjust accordingly. One of the great things I think about on one is you have so much power with masking and the opacity and all the different settings, uh, not to mention all these creative filters that you can really just do something that's vastly different than what you started with. So in that vein, let me show you, that's what I started with, that's what I ended with. And you know what, you may not like it, and that's totally cool. I think it's fun, I think it's different. Do I love it, is it amazing? No, but it's very different, it's very creative, and more than anything, 
I had fun experimenting and using all these different tools to come up with something that was completely different than with what, uh, than what I started with, which is really the goal. So that's how you can use some of these filters and tools like the masking, uh, perfect brush, things like that, how you can use them to customize the look of an image and frankly, just get creative. I stacked, you know, three different textures, lots of filters, just a bunch of crazy stuff and came up with a very different image and it was fun. And I think I learned something in the process. Hope it gives you some ideas more than anything. I'm just showing all the stuff that you can do in on one because it's very powerful and very capable and I'm having fun exploring it and kind of sharing that creative journey that I'm uh, embarking on with this product with you guys. Hope it helps. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves out there. Have fun editing. I'll see you in the next video and adios.